Hi, and welcome back to Age of Noob. The August public update preview for Age of Empires 2 teases some significant upcoming balance changes, especially for two units that have been untouched for a long, long time. Well, let's dive into the proposed changes that could have a big impact on the meta. Starting with the general balance changes, the Crossbowman and the Arbalester will both receive a sizable nerf. You heard that right. These two staple units of the Castle and Imperial Age respectively will have a more expensive upgrade when you age up. The Crossbowman upgrade's cost will increase from 125 food and 75 gold to 175 food and 125 gold. Admittedly, the Crossbowman upgrade was one of the most bang for bug upgrades in the game for the longest time, so I'm curious to see how build orders, timings, and overall Castle Age mana will shift with the additional 50 food and gold cost. The Armalister upgrade's cost, on the other hand, will increase from 350 food and 300 gold to 450 food and 400 gold. Although this is twice the nerf at face value, I think the crossbow nerf will have a much bigger impact on the game than the Arbalesters. Regardless, teching into both of these units will be slightly more difficult now, so keep that in mind. Moving on, the regionally unique unit of Armored Elephants and its upgraded version will both be affected by Siege Engineers. Like the Rams, they won't get the range, but they will get the additional damage against buildings. I think this is a good change, as I don't see a reason why they wouldn't get affected by Siege Engineers when Rams already do. Elephant Archers get a pretty decent buff, as they will cost 10 less food to train, down to 80 food and 70 gold per elephant. More importantly, their Cavalry Archer Armor will change from minus 7 to minus 4, which basically means that they will take less bonus damage from units like the Skirmishers. Regarding Civilization specific changes, let's start with the Bengalis. Their only change is that their monks now receive a whopping 3 melee and pierce armor. Although the Bengalis don't really have special monks, they do have a very open tech tree for their monastery. Hence, this change might make them situationally more viable now. The Burgundians get a few changes as well. Their economy upgrade food discount will be changed from 50% to 40% and the Costellier gets a slight rework. Although its charge attack damage will be reduced by 5 from plus 25 to plus 20 for the regular version and from plus 30 to plus 25 for the elite version, the charge time itself will be reduced from 40 seconds to 33 seconds. Hence, this means that their charges will deal less damage overall, but they will be able to hit and run more frequently. At first glance, I think this is still an overall nerf, as I don't think the 7 seconds makes up for the significant drop in the charge damage. The Dravidians get access to new toys in the Imperial Age, as they will now be able to train Bombard Cannons. To be fair, they still don't have access to Siege Engineering, so they will be below average. However, this basically means that their Siege Workshop tech tree is now fully open, so the occasional Bombard Cannon or two when needed will definitely add to their flexibility. The Gurjaras get a whole slew of changes as well. The first elaborate change will be made to the mill, as its resource trickle is increased from 3.5 to 17.5. While we all thought that this was clearly a typo, it was confirmed by the developer Promi that this was intended. Of course, there's more to the change, as the resource trickle is now non-linear with diminishing returns as you garrison more livestock. Based on initial calculations, it works akin to the following examples. You will get roughly 7 food per minute for 1 sheep and roughly 28 food per minute for 8 sheep garrisoned inside a single mill. That said, if you garrison 8 sheep inside 8 different mills, then you will get roughly 56 food per minute. To give you folks a bit of context, here's a comment from Promi explaining the change. It should stay almost exactly the same when using standard Arabia per player livestock amounts. The food generation values are based on the amount of food held by the livestock. So, unless modded, 2 cows would be equal to 3 sheep. If you're getting any livestock lamed or playing on a map with less available livestock, it will have a less drastic negative effect in regards to food generation than before this change. When garrisoning more livestock food for the standard amount, i.e. stolen, received from allies, map with extra livestock, modded livestock food carry amounts, the positive effect will be smaller compared to before. I think this is overall a good change that is meant to force players to use this mechanic as intended, and don't go for cheese, laming, or other tactics to pull this unique mechanic to extremes. Hence, I like this change quite a bit. That said, the Grujaras will have their mounted unit bonus toned down a touch, as their bonus damage will be decreased from 50% to 40%. The Elite Shivamsha upgrade gets a slight rework as well, as its cost will be buffed from 800 food and 600 gold to 850 food and 500 gold, but the unit's recharge rate will be nerfed from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Moving on, the Hindustanis get a very strong nerf that has been called out by the community for a while, as they will no longer be able to upgrade their pikemen to the halberdiers. Remember that they do lack plate mail armor and they don't have any infantry bonuses, so their pikemen won't be the way to go. Also, the Ghulam standard and elite versions will have their HP reduced by 10, which is also a sizable nerf. 
And finally, the Sicilian's bonus damage reduction is decreased from 50% to 33% instead. I'm not sure how I feel about this change, but this means that Sicilians will have to be less haphazard about the engagements they take against traditional counter units. I'll have to test this to understand its full effect. Apart from these balance changes, a map voting system will now be an in-game button, which should drive more votes and traffic than the current system. It will be on the top right corner on the main menu, and you will be able to toggle between 1v1 and team map pools. I really like that the voting will now be in-game, but I think the maps should all be seen at a glance instead of having to scroll down. Granted, it's still in its preview state and we're looking at dummy data, so we'll have to wait and see how this is implemented on the live version. Well, that's all you need to know about the upcoming changes for Age of Empires 2 in August. Overall, I'm really excited to see how especially the crossbowmen and the arbalest nerfs will impact the current meta, especially at pro play. And if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more AoE2 content, please be sure to like and subscribe to Age of Noob. As always, thanks for watching everyone, be on the lookout for the new Archer build orders in the next patch, and see you all in the next one.